The Money School Podcast is brought to you by Anchor, where you can create, distribute, and monetize your own podcast for free. You can create on your computer, or like me, on your phone. Anchor will distribute your podcast on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can make money from your own podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to the Money School Podcast. Today is August 10th, 2020. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you all had a great start to your week. There's a ton going on in the money world, so let's dive right in. Uh, Things that I was looking for to start this week are the relationship between the dollar and gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Um, More of the same today. We're starting to see the dollar, which has just been taking a pounding. Looks to me like it's starting to, to base out a little bit and potentially have a little relief rally. Um, Gold continues to surge as of the recording of this. The futures for gold are 2,025 an ounce, and silver is sitting right at 29. That's a relationship of 70 to 1. Looking for that to continue to close with silver continuing to push higher. Um, We'll see how that all goes, but it feels really crowded to me. The metal space has been a bet, whether it's inflationary hedge or deflationary hedge or doomsday bet, or there's a lot of reasons to hold it with the, the, you know, all the money printing and the budget stuff that's happening, but it still feels very crowded to me. Um, Part of the reason why I'm interested in Bitcoin is I feel like that's going to be another store of value. Uh, It's transacted more in a dark market kind of space still. Um, But it's breaking out and above 12,000, it's interesting to me. Uh, Gold at 2,025, it's great if you own it. Starting new positions there in the short term, I feel like it's pretty crowded, um, like I said. So kind of starting to pause on gold and silver, even though I still like it. I think long term we're going to... 26, 2800 in gold. Um, and we're going to go, you know, I think $40 in silver over the next, I mean, time frames are difficult, but I think we're going to see sitting at 29. I think we see 39 before we see 19. Looking at stocks, the S&P is up for the 10th day in a row now. And looking at the futures, we're less than 40 points away from all-time highs. So there's a lot priced in in terms of positivity and momentum and planning on good news and positive corporate profits for both the short-term, mid-term, and long-term. And uh, everything starts to feel crazy and crowded and expensive and with a huge premium. Today, the tech sector sold off a little bit and there's always this growth versus value conversation that happens. And I, I, I always view it as a negative interpretation, even though if you listen to CNBC or a lot of the market commentary, it's, you know, always spun to be positive where people are buying things that have just been total dogs and selling off the things that have been winners and, Looking at the price action of what was up today, the cruise lines and some of the airlines, I don't think that that contrasts well with, you know, college football being canceled today effectively and what that means for travel in this country for the next six months. I think that just is a really big warning sign that some of these contrarian value bets that people are trying to make right now. Um, I, I think there's a lot of risk in there that I don't see the upside. Unless it's just straight gambling on terms of, you know, if there's going to be a vaccine, if there's going to be positive news, but that's not really what I like to invest in. I want to buy, you know, good companies that are going to manage the ship in a, in a, with the wind in their sails and not, 
you know, with all of these incredible headwinds, but value, I mean, at least there wasn't a sell-off today, and there was a bid on some of the things that have sold off, and we'll see if that continues to happen, but like I said, we're 10 days in a row without a down day. We're about due. We're at all, almost all-time highs. I think we'll touch that, and um, there will be a little bit of rebalancing. Um, even though I said I don't really buy a lot of the value stuff, I did start a bunch of positions in real estate today, home builders and some suppliers, top build. Uh, I bought top build, and it immediately sold off $5, so you can get a little bit better price. Um but there's some companies that I think will continue to enjoy the benefits of the real estate market, interest rates, PPP money, um, and just the current environment we're in where there's a bunch of suburban flight and people trying to get into a little bit bigger living space. So went long, some more housing. Um, I still like big cap tech the best. I don't like value outside of like, once we get down through the Russell 1000, the first thousand companies in, in the Russell are about 500 million or more. And those are to me investable. And then when you get to a thousand to 2000, there's a whole bunch of garbage in there and people say they're buying value or whatever, but there's just a lot of really poorly run small companies that are small for a reason. And I think the mid cap, players and the large cap, you know, I think they're going to be the ones that continue to take market share and see the better path to the other side of all of this. Uh, checking in on TikTok, not to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty sure I was the first person to say that this deal was not going to go through. And now everybody's starting to say it's not going to go through, or there's a lot more skepticism. Um, I think that's going to be the right call. I don't think that this is going to happen. I think that TikTok just is too, we just, I did a whole episode on it. So go back and listen to that. Um, my feelings haven't changed on it. If there is a deal, I think it's going to be a situation where they sell some sort of spinoff and they don't really release the algorithm or the secret sauce or I, I, there's going to be some type of controversy if it does happen and I just don't think it will get through. It was put together too hastily and I don't think it's realistic that it's going to happen. And I don't think the tech companies ultimately want investors clearly don't want an environment where the federal government is just going to tell companies they need to sell um, because of whatever reason. That's all for today. Thanks for listening to the show and for supporting the money school podcast. You can become a Money School Plus member at patreon.com slash Nate Brantley.